Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching episode 106 of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to pick up where I left off uh, in episode 102 where I talked about how to fabricate a fretboard in such a way as to minimize the amount of fretwork that you need to do later on. And what I'm going to talk about specifically in this episode is a technique that I use to triage the fretwork in order to determine whether or not I'm going to have to level all of the frets or just do a little bit of spot leveling. So let's get started. Once all the frets are pressed into the neck, um, the next step is to clip off just that little bit that's hanging off the edge. And to do that, I'm just going to use the, the same wire cutter. It's, the, it's my Harbor Freight wire cutter that I use to cut each wire uh, to length before installing it. And I just uh, place the, the flat surface right up against the edge of the fretboard and then snip off as much as I can. I still will have some hanging over, but it's a, it's a lot less uh, than before, and that's going to be much easier to grind down here in a minute. So this is kind of like a preliminary step here. Uh, and as I've uh, mentioned before, the frets that I use are stainless steel. And people always complain about how hard stainless steel is on their tools. And that may be true to some extent. I, I think it's really more of a, an issue with diamond coated tools than anything else. But like for this, this cutter, I've been using this thing for years. And what I did was I just ground the face flat with my bench grinder. And then every so often when that uh, edge gets chewed up, uh, I'll just grind it, take it back to the bench grinder, grind it flat again, and, and I'm good to go for a while. And then eventually uh, this tool will be uh, beyond the point of, of uh, being able to um, you know, grind that surface, so then I'll just replace it with a new one. And, you know, these things are, I, I don't think this is more than 10 bucks a pop, but I'll put a link down in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested in purchasing one. So after snipping the edges of the frets as close to the edge of the fretboard as I can, the next step is to fine tune that by bringing those edges right flush to the edge of the fretboard. And there's a couple of different ways that that can be done. One of the ways that I've done it in the past is I use a block of wood that has a section of file, a metal file, attached to the side. And this angle is about a 35 degree angle. So all I have to do is place that on, place the file against the frets on the with the block on the top of the frets and then just go back and forth. And it works pretty well, but um, it's pretty labor intensive, especially with stainless steel frets. So I use a slightly different method, and this is what I do. I use a four inch by 36 inch belt sander to uh, sand the edges of those frets flush with the edge of the fretboard. And the way I do it is I'll set the fretboard down onto the belt as it's moving, and I'll just gradually move it back and forth, keeping it uh, vertical, uh, straight up and down, and being aware of where my headstock is in relation to the end of the belt. And I'll just move it back and forth, and then as, a, as I'm getting it flush, I'll gradually start to roll the uh, fretboard over toward me. And that will put in a slight angle to the edges of the fret and get it all nice and, and smooth with the edge of the fretboard. It's not perfect, but we're that much closer. So once I have installed the frets and I have 
clipped and ground the ends of the frets so that they're flush with the edges of the fretboard, I like to let the neck sit for a couple of days. And the reason for that is because when you press or hammer frets into the slot, you're creating tension on the fretboard wood. And that's because you're shoving uh, the tang and the barbs into a tight slot. And that creates a vertical uh, release of tension on the fretboard, which can induce movement in the wood. And sometimes this is immediately apparent. Other times it can take a couple of days for it to show up. But typically what happens is you'll notice a little bit of bow in the neck and it can bow down in the center or it can bow up in the center. Uh, another problem that can occur is sometimes you can notice the neck twist a little bit. And depending on the severity of the situation, you may find that there's nothing you can really do about it and the neck is really not gonna be usable. So if it's just a little bit of bow, you can take care of that by adjusting the truss rod. But like I said, it's, it may take a couple of days for that to show up. So I'm gonna let it sit for um, probably two days or so. And I'll, I'll put it in a room where the temperature remains pretty consistent as well as the humidity levels. And then I'll come back and I'll check to see if there's been any movement in the fretboard of the neck. After the neck has been allowed to rest for a couple of days, I'm ready to move on with the next steps. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna check the neck to make sure that there isn't any noticeable twist and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a notched straight edge and I'll place it on the center line of the neck. And it helps to have a bright light so that you can see what's going on. And what I'm going to try to do is check and see if there's any bow that is occurring along its length. And I can see here on this neck there is a little bit of bow right in the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust the truss rod to level that neck and keep it and make it as flat as possible. Then I can start to move on with the next step. So after adjusting the truss rod to make sure that the fretboard is completely level, I'm now ready to start checking the quality of my fret installation. And what I'm looking for is to see how level the frets are in relation to each other. And the way I do that is I just use a fret rocker tool and I'll start at one end and I will check from side to side to see if there are any spots along each of the frets that might be higher than the adjacent frets. And if there are, the fret rocker is gonna rock like a teeter-totter and that will tell me that I have a high spot. And if I've done everything correctly, there won't be any high spots anywhere along the length of this fretboard. However, that doesn't happen as often as you would like it to, to be. Unfortunately, because of the fact that we're dealing with clearances that are literally thousandths of an inch, there's always gonna be a possibility of a slight bump or high spot on a fret. And if that happens, if I uh, find one while checking, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I've got a high spot right here. And I, I like to check carefully along the entire length to see if that High, if it's the entire fret that's high or just a, a portion of it. In this case, I have just a small high spot, right? So what I'll do is I'll mark that with a red Sharpie. And I try to mark the entire length of the area that's giving me a problem. And I'll continue working my way up the fret, up the fretboard, looking for high spots. And I've got the neck resting on one of my uh, rice bag uh, and jean leg supports and this just keeps the neck so that it doesn't you're not you're, you're not pressing down and causing uh, an artificial bow to occur 
But what I'm going to do is make my way along the entire fretboard looking for high spots. And once I'm finished, what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll look and see how many of these little red Sharpie marks I've made. Now, in this case, I have one. Uh, but once I'm completely done, I may have two or three high spots. My rule of thumb is if I'm under, say, five little marks, little Sharpie marks, I can go ahead and do just a spot level. If, on the other hand, I end up with more than five high spots anywhere along the length of the fretboard, I'm going to have to use a slightly different technique for leveling the frets. Instead of just doing the spot leveling, I'll have to level all the frets. When you're leveling, uh, spot leveling just a few spots, high spots along the fretboard, that can actually save you some time. It, it's, it's easier and it's a little bit quicker. You just have to be careful not to remove too much material because if you do, all you end up doing is moving the problem further up the fretboard. So what you fix on one fret, you end up creating a new problem elsewhere. So if it's more than five high spots, it's just easier to do a full length fret leveling. And I'll get to that in a future episode. Well, that's all the time I have for this week's episode. In the next episode, which will be 107, I plan to talk about the two different techniques that I use for leveling my frets. I'll be covering some spot leveling as well as the full length leveling. So until then, take care, have a great week, a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.